So here we are again at the site of our cutout. We've come back a few days later, and as you can see, a large number of the bees have accepted that this hive is their new home. They're orienting down to the entrance, they're flying in and out and collecting resources and bringing them back for this colony. However, you can see there are also a large number of bees who haven't gotten the memo, who have decided that they're going to keep going back to the original entrance even though there's no more brood there and they can't even get into the space because of the insulation that we hung. There will be some losses, some bees that just can't learn the new location, but you should be able to move enough that you're still going to have a strong, healthy colony. Because this homeowner wanted to keep the colony right here, we decided to put it in its final location at the end of our cutout, and so that does mean that more of these foragers, these field bees that had already learned this location, are going back here even though their real colony is just over here. So we've come back to our cutout a few days later, and we've done that to do a few important things. First, we need to make sure that the bottom board has been thoroughly cleaned of any of the hive debris that might have fallen underneath the new colony that we've set up here. All of the wax, dead bees, drips of honey that might have fallen onto that bottom board have to be removed so that wax moths and small hive beetles can't start reproducing inside the hive. We also need to clear that screened bottom board so that we can put in an oiled sticky board and then collect varroa mites that are falling through the screen. And we have to do that to find out whether this colony has a high or a low parasite load. If it's got a lot of mites, we need to treat it as soon as possible. We also need to go into the frames themselves and figure out whether or not we got the queen during our cutout from the wall. If we find the queen in there laying, or if we find eggs that she has produced, then we know that everything's all right and we can leave the colony to get settled. However, if we find queen cells, that tells us that the queen was lost, killed, damaged, somehow didn't make it into this box. And if that's the case, we need to make sure that they have a replacement. We can allow them to raise their own from those cells, but because it's getting late in the season already, we don't want them to have to go through the whole long waiting period of raising a new queen and then hoping that that queen goes out and mates successfully. So instead, what we'll do is rip out those cells and install a caged queen instead. That's going to allow her to come out, start laying in just a few days, and get this colony really growing and getting ready for the winter. What I see here is that this colony is actually very, very uh, workable. I don't find them to be terribly ill-mannered. They're not an extremely defensive colony. And that's good and relatively typical of feral colonies in our area here in upstate New York. In some other places, especially places that have more African bee genetics, you may find considerably more defensiveness in your feral colonies. So that even if you do find the queen, it might be a good idea to plan to remove her. So you can see that by going in, I've actually found whole pieces of comb that just slipped through uh, some of those rubber bands. And so I'm going to shake the bees off of that and just remove this temptation for pests like wax moths and small hive beetles uh, and remove the bees need to be distracted by maintaining and cleaning all of this. And I'll even help out some of the bees who have gotten lost down here by shaking all of the bees who are currently here back into the top box. Or, I guess, bottom box now. So now I would be ready to go into the screened bottom board and apply some amount of oil which will allow this to be sticky enough to catch mites that are falling through the screen. If I come back a few days later, typically three days is the check that we do, and I count how many mites have fallen, that's going to allow me to monitor how many Varroa mites are falling each day for three days, and from there I'll be able to figure out the average mite fall per day. That's going to let me estimate the overall Varroa population, and then I will be able to decide to treat or not treat this colony based on how many parasites they actually have.
Now when we performed the cutout, we didn't put any brood into this top box. And so all we need to do is check the bottom box's combs to figure out whether or not we've got a queen, whether we have queen cells, and how we need to proceed. So as you can see, the bees have had plenty of time in the last few days to start anchoring these combs together and stabilizing them. And they aren't just being held in by the rubber bands anymore. They're actually being held to the walls, to the bottom, by each other, and all of the wax that the bees have already added. So we're going to check these brood frames and just try to figure out whether we can see newly laid eggs that the queen has put in, or queen cells, which tell us that the original queen didn't make it into this colony. I want to be careful not to flip these up in front of my face like I might normally do, because these combs are still relatively unstable. So I see lots of capped brood, but I don't see any sign of the queen, I don't see any eggs, but I also don't see any queen cells, so we'll have to keep going. Here I can see more nectar and more brood, but no queen cells or eggs. Now a couple of these combs have actually been anchored together, and that's because the bee space, the plane of that comb, is not perfectly set. And so this is going to be a problem. It might be tempting to just leave some of these combs that are all stuck together, allow the bees to just anchor those and then stop manipulating those frames independently. But that will only cause trouble for you in the future. It's always worth going to the trouble of separating things so that you have nice, even combs and movable frames whenever you notice a problem. Because it will never get better, it will only get worse. I'm very pleased to say that on this frame, Right in this patch, I can see freshly laid eggs. And so those eggs let me know that through all of the chaos of that cutout process, even though we never saw the queen, even though bees got sucked into that vacuum and might have been circulating inside it for a good long while, the Colorado Bee Vac did not kill this queen because we've still got a healthy laying queen right here in this colony and they're going to begin growing and then continue to grow through the rest of the season.